Good morning and welcome to Willow Glen United Methodist Church in San Jose, California. I'm Brian Adkins, the senior pastor here. And I know there are folks joining us from across the state and beyond. And if you're joining us for the first time, I'd invite you to visit our website, wgumc.org. Send us a message and let us know you've stopped by. We'd love to be in relationship with you. And we're a congregation that strives to extend a radical welcome. Wherever you are in your faith journey, whatever's happening in your life, whatever your sexuality or gender identity, whatever your political perspective, whatever your physical or cognitive ability, whatever your addiction or recovery status, whatever your mental health struggles, there's a place for you here. And we're glad you're with us. Welcome. Now let's enter into worship with grateful hearts. I, um, I wrote a short poem for this week's service inspired by our weekly after-service coffee Zoom meetings. I turn to face familiar Sunday faces enclosed in a matrix of boxes. The boxes keep us apart but safe. They bind us together but also put us at risk. If I could, I would lift up all the boxes and carry them to Wesley Hall where we would have an unboxing party to celebrate our togetherness. And then we would find all the missing boxes and bring them back to Wesley Hall and open them up too, like it was Christmas morning. Living life in boxes is trying my patience, but I have to keep trying new ways to unbox my church. Our story today is Scaredy Squirrel at the Beach. What do you think Scaredy Squirrel is afraid of? Because his Crab. name is Scaredy Squirrel. What do you think? Crabs. Crabs? Um, what else might he be scared of? Lily? Everything. Everything. You think that might be why his name is Scaredy Squirrel? Okay. I wonder. I think it's also spider crabs. Spider crabs too? Okay, all kinds of crabs? Spider crabs. 
Crab. Well, should we find out what happens to Scaredy Squirrel when he wants to go to the beach? It says, warning, Scaredy Squirrel insists that everyone put on number 65 sunscreen before reading this book. Scaredy Squirrel never goes to the beach. He'd rather vacation at home alone, where it's safe, than risk being surrounded by the wrong crowd. Mm. He'd rather be alone where it's safe. Let's find out what he's afraid of. A few crowds scaredy squirrel wouldn't want to be in the pot in the middle of. Herds of sea monsters, packs of pirates, flocks of seagulls, tribes of jellyfish, tons of falling coconuts, or mobs of lobsters. Would you want to be with those? No, definitely not. I would not want to be with a lobster. He no lobsters? No. Okay. So he's perfectly happy to build his very own private beach. How many of you have extra extra things in your backyard to yeah, make your I private a, playgrounds right now. I have a pool. And yeah. I also have a pool and I have two play structures. So if you're going to stay at home, you make it make it nice, right? Guess what? So here's what he, he does. I have a pool and, uh, and it's deflated by a cat. Oh. Cat it's clawed to pop it. That's right, the cat popped it. That was a bummer. So Scaredy Squirrel builds a safe beach. He uses paper and crayons, a stick, an inflatable pool, a flashlight, a bag of kitty litter, and a plastic flamingo. A bag of kitty litter. Yeah! First he drew some beach scenery and he used the stick to hold it up. Then he covered the ground with sand. I think that was the kitty litter. He inflated his ocean. What do you think he used for the ocean? Pool. The pool. The water. He turned on the sunlight. What was the sunlight? Flashlight. The flashlight. And he installed some beach wildlife, a flamingo. I see what it's going to look like. It looks like a beach. It feels like a beach. But it doesn't sound like a beach. Scaredy Squirrel notices something's missing. The soothing sound of the ocean. Oh no! How is he going to get that sound? Well, I guess he has to go to the beach. Hmm. Solution. Make a trip to the real beach and find a seashell that fits the description below. It has to be germ-free with a shiny exterior and crystal clear ocean sound. But wait a minute, I thought Scaredy Squirrel didn't want to go to the beach. He was too afraid. I guess he decided to go because he needs to find He needs the sound? Okay. Traveling to the beach requires careful planning. First he gets his passport, then he makes a map to get there. Then he gets all the right clothing on. And then he has an elaborate plan to drop into a box that gets put on a truck and delivered to the beach. Is that how you thought he would get there? No. No. When he gets there, a crowd appears. Was he expecting a crowd? Oh, no. Oh, no. Let's see. People were not part of the plan. Do you want to go to that beach? Oh, no. Oh, I think it's going to faint. You think so? Too crowded? What do you think? What is what do squirrels do when they get scared? They play dead. So he plays dead for 30 minutes, an hour, two hours. And finally, Scaredy Squirrel realizes that the perfect seashell is right under his nose. Look, someone put it on top of him. They buried him and put a seashell on him. So surrounded by friendly people, he decides to join the crowd. Well, Think he, he has fun? He doesn't need his own beach. He can go on the beach. Okay. He's at the real beach. Oh, look, he's having so much fun. What are all the things you do at the beach? I do lots of fun things. I throw sand into the water. You throw sand into the water? He's playing in the sand. He's going in the water. I make 
I need to know. He's glad to be around all those people. All right, back home after a day of fun in the sun, Scaredy Squirrel is inspired to make one important addition to his beach. What do you think he's going to add to his beach besides his seashell? Everybody. You think? He's going to bring. He's going to invite all the friends in. Yeah. Let's see how he does. It. He does. He brings a crowd. Who are his crowded friends? The twelve. Gnomes. They brought all the garden gnomes in. <laughs> Garden gnomes are for Christmas and they're not even alive. They're not even alive. But now he feels like he's at the beach because he has friends with him. That's pretty silly, isn't it? Friends are never alive. Friends are not even alive. Oh my goodness. Well, we're Hold it. Our have you guys we're alive? I know, I know. Have you guys been to the beach this summer? Uh, no, none of, none of us did. No, why not? Not a little bit because of the virus. Because of the oh, virus, I'm, I'm right? Sorry. Why was Scaredy Squirrel, do you remember why he didn't want to go to the beach in the first place? Uh, do you remember? Just a minute. Lately, do you remember why? Because he didn't want to get hurt by the strangers. He was so scared he didn't want to go. He was kind of scared of everybody, wasn't he? He thought it would be safer at home. Do you, what did you want to add, Johnny? See, uh, herds of sea monsters. Herds of sea monsters and lobsters and, and jellyfish. Yeah, all sorts of things. Was he afraid the of the people? Kind of. Kind of, but he hadn't really thought about that part, had he? Yeah. yeah. But we yep. think about the beach and we think that might be too many people for us right now, yeah, right? So Scaredy Squirrel's idea of making a beach at home was a good one for our times, yeah. isn't it? He's kind of a prophet. Yeah. Just a minute. Um, but what did he need? What did he find that he forgot for his beach? A sound. Um, the sound. Of the the sound and what else? People. people, yeah. Does sometimes your backyard beach feel like it needs some extra people? Yeah. Uh, yeah. people. We're getting a little lonely, aren't we? I, I already have my people, my dad. Uh, so here's, to be right here. here's the story from the Bible this week, okay? So the Israelites left Egypt and they were wandering in the wilderness. And they were wandering, 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 and they were hungry and so God said I will make sure you have enough to eat I will give you meat in the evening and bread during the day and you will always have enough and so they did they he, they were eating this bread and at first when they looked at it they thought well this is really strange it was like bread that fell from the sky and it was it, they called it manna and it wasn't like any bread they'd ever had before it's raining bread and tea. it was kind of like that and they thought what? This is so weird. It wasn't what they were expecting, but it was what they needed, right? God gave them what they needed. So, they were fine, and God said, I will always give you what you need. So, what did Scaredy Squirrel need? Uh, friends. Some friends. Did he find some? And the sound of the water. And the sound of the water. He needs sand. And he needed to feel safe, right? Yeah, so he found a way to have a beach around. and feel safe From with the all those things. Beach. Yeah, yeah. What do we need? Uh, we need to be safe from the coronavirus. We need to be safe, but what else do we need? Um, company, friends, family, and food. friends, family, and food. Three Fs. <laughs> But we do. And we we and need we, to be safe, but we still need our friends, right? Yeah, we need our family. family. And, yeah. and, we, and we need to be so safe. So we have to find safe ways to be with our friends. Like this, right? Yeah, this being a little nice separated. And where I've had chicken curry casserole for dinner. Yum. Yeah. That's are a we, good food. Or we can, like, Zoom. So Scaredy Squirrel was really creative, and he found a way to get what he needed, right? And we have to be a little creative to get what we need. But does God always ha make make sure we have what we need? Yeah. Yeah. Everything we need. Like that. We need enough food. We need. We need a sleep. We need things that we need. We need enough, and we have everything we need. You're right. Are we gonna be okay? Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna be okay. Okay. 
<laughs> so, are you guys ready to pray a little? Pray. Yeah, but we can't hold We our always hands. close up our time by praying. Nope, we're still going to hold our own hands. Okay? Like ready? Don't. Everyone got your hands clasped? You can see the people who are in the circle with you this time, right? Yeah. It's good to see our faces, even if we're behind masks. Everyone give each other a smile behind your mask. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's pray. Most loving God, we give you thanks for all of the ways that you are giving us what we need. While there may be lots more that we want, we know that we have everything that we need to keep us safe and healthy and happy. So help us to be creative and to find new ways to be with one another, to enjoy each other's company in safe and healthy ways. Amen. Now, let's prepare our hearts to pray together. Wherever and whenever you are watching this, remember, prayer binds us together in community, no matter what time or distance or technology might separate us. Take a deep breath and pause for a moment. Now, let's lift up our worries, our concerns, and the joys that we experience in life to the Lord our God. And now I invite you to join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed it be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our Bible reading today is from the book of Exodus, chapter 16, verses 2 through 15. 
the whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you. And each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, in the evening, you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning, you shall see the glory of the Lord because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain about against us? And Moses said, when the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Well, they're barely out of Egypt, just a chapter later, and they start complaining. Literally, in chapter 14, Moses parts the Red Sea, and Pharaoh's army is destroyed, and the Israelites sing a 19-verse victory song. And then Moses' sister Miriam brings out the tambourine and sings two lines, and people start complaining about the water. It's bitter. I don't know if it was the tambourine or what, but they got set off. And the celebration ends with Moses crying out to God. God seems to tell him to uproot a tree and toss it into the water to make the water sweet. Everyone was happy. And Moses said, now if you're all good, boys and girls, God won't smite you with all the diseases that affected the Egyptians. And they started on their journey into the desert. But it isn't long before the people begin to complain again. And as you read on into this chapter, you'll notice that the whole thing is about, mostly about people complaining and then ignoring Moses' instructions. They're hungry. And as you might imagine, the food is scarce in the desert. They say to Moses, did you bring us out here that we might die? And suddenly they become quite nostalgic for their time back in Egypt, reminiscing about the availability of food, how they sat by the fire and had pots of meat and had bread available to them. And of course, they neglected to mention their enslavement. And I remember an old song by this Christian artist, um, Sarah Groves, uh, and, and in it she says, I've been painting pictures of Egypt and leaving out what it lacked because the future looks so hard and I want to go back. Nostalgia can be a convenient comfort. I was just saying to somebody last week uh, that nostalgia can be uh, one the best seasoning as I was reflecting on Grandma Flo's favorite pizza place called Possum Holler. 
In their hunger and their wanting, the children of Israel begin to look back on their time in bondage as a time when at least their basic needs were met. And now they face hunger and uncertainty. Their children are crying. Their animals are thirsty. Their feet are tired already. It's an inauspicious start to what we know as the reader will be a decades-long journey. The adrenaline of the chase had worn off. The pillar of fire and smoke that had led them out of Egypt to begin with had evaporated. And the harsh reality of a wandering in the desert life was settling in. Now, maybe some of us are feeling that way. Maybe when this whole COVID pandemic started, when the first shelter-in-place order came down, there might have been a rush of adrenaline. Everybody ran out to stock up on a decade's worth of toilet paper. But the adrenaline wore off. Then a week of shelter in place turned into a month. And a month turned into a season. And that season turned into another. Now into another. And like the Israelites, we've had no destination other than a promised land, a hope, no timeline other than sooner or later. And we're left with now what? A hunger for companionship, for the way things used to be. And while we wait, tragedies continue to unfold around us in the form of wildfires. How can this not feel apocalyptic? But I would pause here to mention that the word apocalypse comes from the Greek meaning unveiling, a revealing. If this is an apocalyptic time, I ask what's being revealed to us and about us and within us. I think about the Black Lives Matter movement and what's happening in the streets. I think about political discourse. I think about the economic situation. I think about um, a lot that's being revealed in our society uh, these days. I think that if it is an apocalyptic time, then indeed something is being revealed. It may not be an obvious something, but something is being revealed. I'm afraid that we've spent so much time waiting with bated breath for the signal that life is going to return to normal. That the signal that we can go back to the way things were, that we can do what we've always done the way we've always done it, and as we wait, the finish line keeps moving further away. Now, I thought for sure we'd be back together in worship in the church building by Pentecost this year. Well, it's then surely by September. And now by the beginning of Advent. For Christmas, maybe? We don't know. We can't know. Now, now at least, we can't know. And I wonder, it's got me wondering, what point the Israelites stopped complaining and decided that just because they were wandering didn't mean they weren't home? At what point do we decide that just because we're not at the church doesn't mean we're not at church? And what were the Israelites doing all that time anyway? We hear, wow, they wandered for 40 years in the desert and think, hmm, that's a long time. And then we hear promised land, yay, they made it. But what were they doing all that time? Remember their hunger and their complaining against Moses and their crying out to God. God responded with quails and manna from heaven. Quails, we know, migratory birds came in the evening and they were fed. But manna, we don't know what it was. In fact, the Hebrew word manna literally means, what is this? But they received it every night and they were fed. The point is that God supplied their need day by day. And as they journeyed, they kept growing. Some babies were born. Some old people died. Some young people died. People told stories. Kids played whatever games kids played back then. People fell off camels sometimes. They got lost. People got sick. People comforted each other. They worshiped together. They laughed. They cried. They laughed till they cried. And during those years, they got the Ten Commandments. They got Deuteronomy, which means 
the second law, plenty of laws. They got lots of laws during that time. They got the book of Numbers, which was basically the census. They were figuring out who they were as a people in the world so that when they got to where they were going, wherever that was, they'd be ready to face whatever was there. And they didn't forget Egypt. They didn't stop telling the stories of Egypt and the Red Sea and manna from heaven, but eventually they realized that the same thing that the singer Sarah Groves learned, the places that used to fit me cannot hold the things I've learned. Those roads were closed off to me while my back was turned. Some roads have been closed off to us this year. 2020 might have taken a lot from us, maybe from you personally. But maybe looking back at the comforts we have known might also help us to see the limitations of that experience. Maybe help us to see how our comfort was keeping us from growing. Retrospectively, we might be able to see our blissful ignorance of the lived experiences of people of color in our lives and in the world. Looking back, we might be able to see how our comfort kept us separated from others whose identity or experience or status is so different from our own. We might be able to see who we took for granted. We might come to understand how valuable a hug and a handshake is. The places that used to fit us cannot hold the things we've learned. We've still found ways to be the church, to be in service, to reach out and be a blessing in the world. And we're gonna to continue to find those ways, even in what might feel like a desert time. We're learning and growing into who we are. We're finding new ways because we're on our way somewhere, even if we don't know what the destination is gonna look like. My hope for us and really for the global church is that we find our way to live in this missional moment, in this, even in this wandering wilderness. Not looking back to Egypt, not holding our breath for the promised land, but journeying beside those around us, leaving no one behind, lifting up those who are too tired to walk, making sure that everybody has their daily bread, their daily manna, and leaning on the everlasting arms of a good and gracious God. We're gonna make it, however long it takes, whatever, whatever roads we have to wander, whatever detours along the way, we're gonna make it. And we're gonna be blessed when we get there. But let's be a blessing on the way. Thanks be to God.
John Wesley said, do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as you ever can. I really like that quote. And Willow Glen United Methodist Church does a lot of good in this world and continues to do that, even as this pandemic challenges us all. And right now, we have an opportunity to offer our gifts to the ministries of this church by visiting our website at wgumc.org slash give, or if you prefer, simply send a check to the church. The good work of this church is impossible without your financial support. Please give as you can.
And now we bless this offering. God, we thank you for the generous givers in this congregation and beyond. We ask you to bless these offerings. And we ask that you transform them into good works as your son Jesus Christ did in this world and taught us to do. We ask that what we give is put to work in the way that you would see builds the world to become what you want it to be. In your son's name, we pray. Amen. to dread what have I to fear leaning on the everlasting arms beloved as you go forth into the world this week may you go forth in peace and in joy sharing the love of Christ with those you meet along the way let's go forth in the name and in the way of Jesus amen Amen. 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 Amen.